the absolute state of this story. Now, this story, I think, really underlines two things. The absurdity of the so-called uh, anti-woke backlash, but also just how emboldened bigots have become in this country. Now, Essex police seized the collection of 15 gollywogs from the White Hart Inn in Grey's Essex. And this was because there was an anonymously reported hate crime, which was reported. Now, the two owners of this pub, Benice Riley and Chris Riley, um, they are the ones who had this collection of gollywogs, 15 gollywogs, which were, as I've said, seized by the Essex police. I'll just, expl I'll just explain some of the details and then we'll, we'll just unpack exactly what's happened here. Now, apparently, the man online was briefed by Suella Braverman's, a source close to her, basically, uh, which suggested uh, that Braverman had made her unhappiness very plain to Essex police, so they're under no illusions. Um, the adding that police forces should not be getting involved in this kind of nonsense. It's about tackling antisocial behaviour, stopping violence against women and girls, attending burglaries and catching criminals, not seizing dolls. It should be said that Essex police have denied that they were ticked off. Now... So basically what happened is there was a complaint about um, reports of someone being in some way racially harassed, alarmed or distressed by the presence of these gollywogs, which is, and I do think this needs to be emphasised over and over again, gratuitously racist caricatures. Now, they, the, the landlady complained, bemoaned, oh, the police love the dolls, I have no updates at all, the whole thing is totally mad, oh, there's definitely some mad elements about this which I'm about to go on to. Since the gollies were taken and the stories in the newspapers, we have had so many people get in touch with myself and my husband to say we shouldn't give up and we should keep them on our shelf. I wonder what the views of those people are, those particular punters who are so desperate for the gollywogs. Over the last two days, my customer, my customers keep singing, save the gollies, and they want us to get them back. As I've said, it's a real mystery, isn't it? A real conundrum what the worldview of these customers are, whose big core cool celeb is saving racist caricatures stuffed behind the pub bar in this particular um, establishment in Essex. Oh, I mean, it gets worse. So we're having a sign prepared that will say, gollies are on display, so don't come in if that offends you. And then they're going to restore more of the gollywogs to the shelf. Right, so, just in terms of the... So, all clear. I mean, as I've said, I know it must be a real mystery. What do these... What do these landlords really think beyond being fans of gollywogs? Now, the, the, the landlord, this Facebook image has come to light, has a Facebook image of gollywogs, his gollywogs being hanged behind the bar. His, he writes, we have our gollywogs, yay. Um, and they're, as I've said, being hanged. His wife replies, are you sure this is legal, lol? Well, it... Some awareness, then, of what they're doing, it seems. He responded, they used to hang them in Mississippi years ago. You could just argue at this point, I don't need to say anything more, given that he's hanging racist caricatures of black people and then has posted on Facebook about how they, by which we mean white supremacists, used to hang them, i.e. black people, in the deep south of the United States many years ago. Now... Following the Black Lives Matter protests, which followed the police murder of George Floyd back in 2020, he posted a White Lives Matter uh, image on Facebook. When Kwesi Kwarteng was fired as Chancellor of the Exchequer, he posted Black Chancellors Matter. Um, he's also posted such delights as, when is White History Month, please, anybody know? He posted a picture of some carrots mocked up as a family reading a book with the only same race family you will see on, on TV this Christmas. He also wrote this long spiel regretting the bygone era of the 1970s and 1980s, which featured the, I mean, if you want to know about Love Thy Neighbour, do Google it and you'll see the problem. And then adds, nowadays we have transgenders, gays, people that don't know what they are, Illegal immigrants, schools teaching transgender at an early age, what is their agenda? Then adds, we now have the prospect of a Muslim MP, um, P PM, along with many other Muslim mayors throughout the UK. There was an, obviously other Muslim mayors apart from Sadiq Khan. Don't get me wrong, I choose to live in a Muslim country here in Turkey. I think this is because he seems to, seems to move between the UK and Turkey, because the Mail Online piece suggests that he's returning from Turkey to the pub which he owns in Essex. Um, did all the UK agree to live under a Muslim regime? Well, I mean, as someone who lives in London, 
which has had a Muslim mayor now since 2016. It's 2023. What does he mean by Muslim regime exactly? There's a mayor who is a Muslim. There is obviously, I mean, does he think that a Islamist state has been imposed in, L in London? Has he, has he visited London? It's not that far from Grey's. Essex, is it? Popular train. Don't, don't think whatever he thinks has been imposed obviously hasn't been imposed. I mean, in fact, the difference is actually because given he's ranting about gays and transgenders, the Muslim mayor of London has far more enlightened views because he's long supported LGBTQ rights, much to the denunciation of the likes of this particular landlord. I mean, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, how they've got this kind of... I mean, these people don't exactly have the most clear, consistent logically coherent worldviews but they'll rant about oh he's a muslim mayor imposing a muslim regime and they'll also rant about him being an lgbtq ally and doing things like doing posts in support of lgbtq rights it's just it obviously doesn't make any sense now as as i've just made clear um gollywogs are a gratuitously racist caricature of black people if you don't understand that then there's a problem showing them hanging from a barn referring to black people being hanged in the deep south um I don't really think that needs additional comment. Um, now, if you're putting a sign outside that if you're offended by gollywogs, you're basically telling black people that they can't enter. Because clearly, the vast majority of black people are not going to be comfortable with an establishment which literally puts outside, advertises the fact it has gollywogs, and then says, if you're offended by them, don't come in. Now, there are laws on discrimination in this country which forbid people being obviously discriminated against in the provision of services and goods, if they are, e.g. black. Now, they could technically say, well, we're not doing that. They're allowed to enter if they're comfortable with the presence of these massively racist caricatures, which we literally have images of them being hanged from our pub bar. But what does that mean in practical terms? Because obviously, the vast majority of black people are not going to feel comfortable or safe in an establishment which does that. Now, the point is, these are the sorts of people being emboldened by the conservatives and the right-wing media in this country. This is the world being created by the likes of Suella Braverman, who is quoted in terms of a source close to her defending um, this pub landlord and this pub, this establishment, from the action taken by the police and our newspapers. Um, what they, What's happened is the term woke has been stolen, by, stolen from African-Americans and that was about being alert to racism and turned into some sort of pejorative, which is just a catch-all term for anyone who cares about racism or any forms of bigotry or any forms of injustice in society to make it out like they're a problematic, bad person. That if you care about anything which is to do with how people are treated, if they are, for example, black or gay or trans or a member of another minority or women's rights, that somehow you just stamp woke on them and you've labelled them a bad person who's uh, or, or, or a laughable person or someone who's, who's not to be taken seriously uh, by those kind of upstanding citizens, the type, of course, who are public landlords who stuff racist caricatures of black people hanging from their bar. Now, the impact of all of this is to embolden bigots who are becoming more and more confident and unashamed in their behaviour. And that's the environment that has been created. So I think it's striking that if you have a Home Secretary who is opposing this police action, and I have to say, look, there's no confidence by the vast majority... Well, there's no confidence by many members of minorities in this country in the police to take action against hate crimes. The vast majority of hate crimes, you do not get any action taken by the authorities, um, essentially decriminalised in this country... Uh, so, you know, let's not say, oh, well, bravo Essex police, look at what they've done here, when, I mean, this is low-lying fruit. It's, it's essentially just a pub with a massively racist display. Um, and, you know, if you're a pub, you, it's the basic thing, isn't it, that you, you can't just run a business, even under the form of rapacious capitalism we have, you can't just run a business um, and, and not abide by any rules. There are various rules you have to abide by if you run a public-facing business, like health and safety, for example, and not, I don't know, committing a hate crime in a, in a really overt way. But this is a story of Britain in 2023 that is revealing and indicative of the sort of society that is being built and crafted by the Conservatives and by their right-wing allies, that by this backlash against the, the attempts by minorities and by women to get their rights and justice and to be treated with dignity and respect, that there are is an angry backlash who, as the old expression goes, when you're when you're um, accustomed 
um, to privilege, then equality feels like oppression. And their view is that the, the right to be racism, the, the right to be racist as they see it, has been undermined uh, by the struggle of black people, by minorities, and that therefore they feel that they have the right to push back by showing dis gratu their gratuitously racist display in an attempt to show that, you know, to, to stick their fingers up at black people and their anti-racist allies to think, well, if you really think you're going to shut us up and stop us behaving in a gratuitously racist way, then you have another thing coming. And this is always what you get. Of course, you always get a backlash, white lash, white lash is it's called in the United States. The struggle of the civil rights movement pro pro provoked a furious backlash, which has ricocheted throughout the decades. Donald Trump is, of course, part of that uh, so-called white lash. And it is dangerous. Uh, and I don't think you can just dismiss that. You shouldn't dismiss anyway a, a gratuitously racist um, um, performance or, or, or display um, in a public house which is supposed to be open to everybody regardless of their background, but is indicative of something broader, which is how these people feel in, emboldened um, and that they can portray themselves as victims and martyrs and even have the official government of this country come to their rescue in a right-wing newspaper to portray them as the, somehow victims of an attack on free speech, of the police not doing their job properly when they should be out there doing... Well, God knows what. Let's let that. That's something I think we can discuss. We can discuss the police, and we will, and how repeatedly discuss the behaviour of the police, um, in other videos. Uh, but this is, as I've said, symptomatic of something far more sinister, and I do think it's something that all of us need to fight. Please like, subscribe, and do support us on Patreon.com/slash. I'm Joseph. I'll see you in a bit.